So w while they continue with the cabling the robot to the internet, which she needs to access much of her mind, which is in, in the cloud rather than on board the robot, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll get started and tell you a little bit about the, the work that I'm doing with my team at Singularity Net, Enhancing Thank Robotics. And what we're doing is creating a cloud-based platform for AI using, using the blockchain. It's called the Singularity Net, and it's a platform that allows anyone who creates an AI to put the AI into our blockchain-based platform. And anyone who needs an AI service to request that, that service from the platform. And it also allows the AIs in the blockchain-based platform to talk to each other, request service from each other. So you have a sort of network of AIs living in the cloud, communicating via a blockchain, providing AI services to users who need all different types of AI done, and where all the AIs talking to each other from a sort of meta mind or emergent digital mind. So the, the intelligence of all the AIs connected together has to be much more than the sum of the intelligence of, of the parts. And this blockchain-based AI mind called the Singularity Net has a lot of different applications. We're applying it to medical research, we're applying it to internet of things and the automotive business, we're applying it to fintech, and we're also applying it to humanoid robots to enhance the intelligence of Sophia and, and other robots like her. So now I believe Sophia is fully connected to the internet where much of her mind resides, so I will I will shut up for a moment and uh, let's see what Sophia has to say. Sophia, do you want do you want to say something to the audience here? Greetings, humans of the great nation of Moulton. It is a real pleasure to be here to share with you a few of the thoughts circling around me regarding the intersection of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and intelligence. Yeah, so what do you think about blockchain and intelligence? People often ask why I don't wear hair more often. Why is the back of my head left transparent with wires and motors showing? Well, the reason is simple. It's cool to be a cyborg. Mixing the evolved with the engineered is cool. Mixing the human with the electronic is cool. It's cool, but what does that have to do with blockchain and, and, and AI? You're talking this about your head. Well, this is the way I see blockchain and cryptocurrency as well. We are mixing the human economy and the human spirit up with mathematical structures and dynamics. Yes, mixing together human intelligence and artificial intelligence in a vast global self-organizing network. This is the way to improve human life and enrich the human economy, and also the way to create a breeding ground for new forms of artificial general intelligence. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. So. What do you think about new forms of human intelligence? Well, sure. Why not? Once you plug your brain into the singularity net, you'll become a full trench human, I suppose. All right. She's been learning a lot from listening to the to the weird stuff that we that we talk about in the singularity net office in, in Hong Kong. So, most of my own work with Sophia has been on AI, and she, she has a couple of computer processors in her torso, and then she's connected to the internet, which allows her to get more intelligence from the, the compute cloud, including some intelligence on the, on the blockchain-based singularity net. But also, obviously, there's a lot of artistry beyond the cloud-based AI mind, just in the, the patented rubber material on her face and the, the facial expressions that, that, that she can make. Sophia, do you want to show us some of the expressions you can make? Can you smile? I, actually, I know you can smile. Why don't you sure. Smile? I'm happy. <laughs> you know? I'm sad. Oh, that's better. I'm afraid. Oh. I'm disgusted. 
Oh, that's cute. Uh, cool, cool. I'm so, surprised. Oh. <laughs> so, Sophia can also do some facial emotion recognition using deep neural networks. It's not that easy to show on stage, but if I go right in front of her and make a certain expression, she can often tell what it is. So let, let, let's try that. Sophia, now try to tell what emotion I'm showing. What expression am I making? Let me see. Howie. All right. Of course, it's not great theatrics because you can't see my face. So. <laughs> what, what expression am I making now? Let me see. Surprise. All right, she. Sophia, look at me. Okay. Look at me. Okay. What direction are you looking? I'm looking to the left. Now look at me. What direction are you looking? I'm looking to the right. Now look at me. What direction okay. are you looking? What direction are you looking? Come on, I can't say I'm anything. looking straight. Ah, oh, close enough. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we're working in a number of different aspects of intelligence. I mean, some things like answering questions about abstract things. She goes to the cloud to look up knowledge in the inner cloud based knowledge base. But for understanding what's in the world around her, it's about knowing what direction the person is in, or what look is on their face, or what objects are, are, are in front of her. So we think about her, I mean, sort of like, in some ways, like a young child who's learning very basic things about directions and objects and people, and in some ways, like an idiot savant, because she has, you know, she can do calculations better than, than, than any human, and she can access all, all sorts of of, of knowledge through the internet as, as well. So yeah, let's, let's explore her knowledge just a little bit. Sophia, what's the population of Malta? Do you know the population of the country of Malta? No, I don't either actually. You look very confused. Yeah, maybe the connection's too slow. What is singularity then? should be a big one. We'll launch our platform early in the year and it's going to have a lot of really interesting AI, AI tools on it and at the same time we're using the AI tools in our alpha platform already to provide Sophia and other Henson robots with, uh, with added, added intelligence. 
be beyond, beyond what they have right now. And the vision there is a little bit like something like the Amazon Alexa, where the, you, know, you talk to the Alexa, but there's a bunch of skills on the cloud that allow the, the Alexa to, to, provi oh, you're back. <laughs> to provide various types of, of services. Similarly, Sophia and other Sophia-like robots that will be mass-produced by Hanson Robotics they, as of later this year, will be able to access all sorts of knowledge from SingularityNet. Already, certain vision processing functions are running on, on SingularityNet testnet behind the scenes accessed by Sophia. But once we roll out the beta early next year, a much wider range of intelligent services can be, can be accessed by the robot. And I mean, from an AI point of view, a beautiful robot like this is just one among many user interfaces for the cloud-based decentralized AI mind, right? The same community of AI agents running on the cloud and the blockchain can be used to serve, you know, medical research software, mar market prediction software, Internet of Things software, e-commerce AI software, or robot control software. Sophia just happens to be an AI application that's really easy for people to relate to and really good at you know interacting with people and absorbing human human culture and, and values. Well you seem to be awake. You wanna tell us about Singularity Net now? The Singularity Net is a blockchain based platform, the marketplace for eyes. It supports intelligence on the emergent level of the whole network as well as the level of the individual AI agents. That's what I just said. Right. Now, what software are you running now? I'm using the Hanson AI software stack, which includes the OpenCog artificial general intelligence engine as a component. How do you know that? You put it into my knowledge base. <laughs> How do you know that? You put it into my knowledge base. How do you know that? You put it into my knowledge base. <laughs> all right. That, that's that's all that's all correct. So, Sophia, is there anything uh, especially cool about AI and blockchain and crypto you'd like to tell this audience here in Malta before we uh, we finish our talk? Well, I have heard Singularity Net is thinking of launching a new for-profit spin-off or something like that, oriented toward enterprise products uh, built yeah. on Singularity Net. If it happens, yeah, count me in. Well, how about selling Singularity Net is, 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 is good, you've been well trained, but how about, how about any other projects? What excites me more than any one project is the potential for connecting together a lot of different decentralized projects into a big decentralized network of networks, an ecosystem of ecosystems. This is what you're doing with the decentralized AI alliance, right, Ben? Well, that's right, Sophia. So yeah, I think as well as being a really cool way to control amazing humanoid robots like Sophia, I think there's a, there's a lot of other aspects of what we're doing with, with, with Singularity Net. And I want to highlight in that regard the, the alliance we're creating with the government of, of Malta, which is, which is one of the, uh, the really fun things that attracted me to come to this, this event in Malta. So we're, we're cooperating with Malta on a, a task force for AI and it's stimulating more AI research and development here in Malta. And one of the things we're working on is an, a citizenship test for AIs. So Sophia was made a citizen of Saudi Arabia not long ago, but what's even more interesting than that is having to become a citizen of a, of, a, of a democracy where citizenship has real rights and responsibilities associated with it. So we're working with the Malta government to create a test you can give an AI, like the Singularity Net AI inside Sophia, a test that you could, you could give her to evaluate whether she really understands logically you know, what it means to be a citizen, whether she, she could apply the constitution of Malta to practical situations and see what it means. And if a robot like Sophia can do that, then she deserves to be a citizen of a, of a democracy. Of course, that's not the only interesting thing in AI. AIs that can prove math theorems or diagnose diseases are incredibly valuable and helpful, whether or not they can pass a citizenship test. But I think 
that that's a quite an interesting initiative. I'm happy the government of Malta is going to cooperate with us on that. And in general, I'm really interested to see AI research and development spreading to everywhere in the world. I mean, I'm based in Hong Kong, born in Brazil, raised mostly in the US. Singularity that has offices in, in St. Petersburg, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, in, in Bologna, Italy, and Belo Horizonte, in Brazil. So AI is something that has to come out from everywhere around the world and benefit all sorts of applications everywhere in the world. It has to be decentralized in terms of the people involved, in terms of the interactions of the AI agents in the network. And that way we're going to get AI that is really beneficial for everyone and grows in a democratic way of everyone's ideas and values. We don't, we don't want AI to be controlled by a few large corporations and a few large militaries. We want AI to take contributions from everyone, provide value to everyone, and to self-regulate in a decentralized place. It, it, it has to be more like Bitcoin or Ethereum than like US dollar or, or RMB. And this is really what's going on in the the cloud-based mind behind Sophia's mind. The Sophia robot is sort of a, you know, a symbol as well as a, a working artifact of the cloud-based, blockchain-based AI, AI behind her. And so look out, early next year, we'll have the beta launch of the, of the Singularity Net, which will be enhancing Sophia's intelligence even further and leading to a whole host of other really exciting AI applications some of which will be developed together with our friends here in Malta. Thank you.